I bought my 2019 Yamaha YZ 450FX brand spanking new back on September 1st, 2018. And I did a custom street legal supermoto build on it as soon as I bought it. And I've ridden it 95% street and 5% off-road. But in this video, for those of you that want a Parappa supermoto like this and have fun like Cycle Cruiser, well, you're gonna wanna stay tuned and watch this video. Let's go for a ride. Subscribe today. If you're riding a motorcycle out there, you need to wear the gear to stay safe out there. And I have links to my awesome gear, like this airbag vest to help keep you safe out there. I never leave home without it. My ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet that comes with an automatic tent shield. My shorty gloves, awesome boots, pants, a motor vlog camera. All my gear is in the description and comment section of this video. First off, all the components that I talk about in this video, I have links to all of my supermodel build stuff in the description and comment section of this video and also my website is cyclecruiser.com click on supermoto build now i know what you're thinking cycle cruiser why should i do a supermoto build when i could just buy a ready-made supermoto such as a suzuki drz 400 sm a husky 701 supermoto or a ktm 690 smcr or heck even a kawasaki klx 300 well those bikes are all heavier than this bike. This bike only weighs 265 pounds wet with a full tank of gas. And those bikes such as the 690 and 701, they weigh 80, 85 pounds heavier than this bike. They have the, uh, the emissions compliant components on there that robs the power of the bike. That's You have to remove that if you wanna get the full power, but I don't recommend it because by law you're supposed to have that. As where this bike here, it has none of that. It's pure race bike. Also, those bikes do have a lot less maintenance intervals. You can go up to 5,000 miles on those street legal, you know, ready-made supermotos. And this one requires like oil changes at least every 10 to 15 hours, um, which is like every third ride for me. And you're supposed to change the piston on this every 12 and a half hours, which means do a top end rebuild. But I've never done a piston change on here. I've never even checked the valves. I have over 100 hours and this bike rides better than new, guys. It's amazing. Um, but this bike is not supposed to be a main motorcycle, okay? This is not a bike you want to commute to work on. This is just a, your second or third bike you take out on occasion and be a hooligan, have fun, mix it up. And, you know, so that's, you have to keep that in mind. But trust me, if you do a supermodel build, you take a race dirt bike like this, turn it into supermodel, you're going to have the most visceral, awesome, soul stirring experience that you could ever experience on these current motorcycles okay the street legal motorcycles are so smooth now and they're so docile and everything it, it takes the fun out of it almost this is going to give you that soul stirring amazing fun <laughs> you will be a hooligan because before i got this bike i wasn't much of a hooligan when i got this bike i turned into a crazy hooligan guys it's you'll have so much fun trust me uh, now, some of you may be asking, Cycle Cruiser, why did you go with uh, a YZ 450FX instead of the WR450F that comes with the headlight? Well, that bike has the emissions crap on it, too. Also, the WR suspension is really soft, which sucks for the street. The YZ suspension is firm, which is perfect for the street. You don't have to do anything. And the reason why I went with the Yamaha YZ 450FX instead of the F version, the motocross version, is because this one has a five-speed wide ratio gearbox, which is better for the street, uh, as where the F version the motocross version has a close ratio gearbox like a lot of other dirt bikes that's great for the dirt track because that's what they're made for right so uh and also this bike has the kickstand of course here which is good for the street as it has the uh, center fuel tank here that's centered this is the only dirt bike i think besides the yz 450f and the wr 450f uh, that has the center fuel tank all the other manufacturers they had their tanks up here telling you man the, <laughs> the handling is improved you all the weight is down lower so this bike feels less weight than it's 265 pounds and and also this bike has rubber dampeners in the bar so you get no vibration in the bars whatsoever uh very minimal at the pegs but it's a it's the good kind where you get that visceral raw wild untamed power and fun 
I tell you, I've had some of the fastest bikes like in a Priya Tuano V4 1100 factory, CBR 1000 RR and a 600 RR. I don't miss the power, guys, but when you have the torque map, the torque monster power on this thing, oh my God. I'm telling you, it's amazing, man. Okay, now let's get into the build components. So if you wanna build a supermoto like this, is first off, you're gonna need supermoto wheels. There's two kinds of supermoto wheels, spoked or cast. Spoked is best, and I highly recommend it because it can take a lot of abuse. If you do a ride up staircases, you do jumps off of platforms, uh, if you ride in the woods over logs and stuff like that, it can take that abuse as where a cast uh, rim, which is much heavier too, by the way, it can get a crack in the rim and then the, the rim can eventually break off and set you up for real FWD, so it's not really safe. I would highly recommend you stick with uh, Spoked. And I, these are Warp 9 Racing Supermoto wheels and they have been awesome. I've had no problems. They come as a kit. So you'll get the 320 millimeter brake disc rotor here. It comes with the adapter kit so you can use your front brake there. And I did a video on how to install this stuff, by the way. I'll include a link top portion of this video. It also comes with a rear sprocket. I went with the 44 teeth. You can choose your size that you want. I highly recommend 44 teeth. The counter sprocket, this is a stock counter sprocket at 13 teeth. And I went with a, a Renthal chain here that is uh, exactly 112 links and they use a clip style here and it's been awesome, no problems. And these wheels come with a cush drive, which you want, use a cush drive. These are the rubber dampeners in there that help reduce stress on the drive components and make for a smoother ride. What's great about Warp 9 Racing wheels is that you can get them tubeless now. Unlike when I first got them, I had to make them tubeless, which I did a DIY video. I'll include a link in this video up in the right corner there. If you want to see that video on how to do it, and it's, it's been amazing. I've had no problems. They hold air better than any street bike I ever had. And by the way, I put on Shinko 705 ADV uh, dual sport wheels on these 17 inch rims. And the reason why I did that is because I want to make this a dual sport slash supermoto. So this allows me to have fun on the streets. You can go super low around corners on this bike, but yet I can take it off road and it has a rubber carcass that resists tearing and is great for riding off road. And I've never gotten stuck in mud in the woods. I've been rode over logs, everything. It's been great. So now that you got the wheels, supermoto wheels, that's what makes a supermoto. Now, if you want to make it street legal, okay, uh, here in Ohio, it's very easy, okay? You just have to make sure you put on all the street legal stuff, like, you know, tail light, turn signals, uh, horn, which is right there, uh, headlight, and uh, mirror. And you go to the uh, title office in Ohio, and you tell them that you want to convert your dirt bike into, that you convert it into a dual sport, they'll give you an affidavit paper that you'll check off that you, you completed all the street legal stuff on the bike and you sign it and that's it. They turn your dirt bike off-road title into a street motorcycle title, which is awesome. So I actually, I actually, I actually can sell this to you in those states that don't allow dirt bikes. Um, so when I ever sell this, you guys, one of you guys will be very lucky to get this bike so you don't have to do anything. You can just take it to your office and get new plates. So what I did is I used the Tusk Dual Sport Lighting Kit and it comes with this fender here with the, the tail light. Uh, it has a modulated brake light. Um, the, it comes with the turn signals which look really cool on there. Um, and I use this Krieger tail pack, by the way, I have a link to as well, that hides the ugly bolts that hold that. That's why I got the tail pack, but also it adds storage here too, so I can put my emergency items if I ever get stranded. And uh, it comes with the switch here for the light on, off, turn signals, the horn, I put the horn there. And I did a video on how to install that dual sport lighting kit, I'll include a link up here in the top corner and I have a link to the lighting kit too like I said in the description and comment section of this video along with all the other components the headlight I went with a Baja Design Sport Squadron headlight it's 26 watts uh, 3150 lumens it lights up the road great at night um, the only problem is 
And the drawback to this bike is that the alternator of the stator does not support the headlight. I learned out the hard way when I first got the bike. <laughs> I had the light on like you do with other motorcycles and it drained my battery. And luckily though, I had my anti-gravity, which I have a link to this as well. This is the restart lithium battery. So if your bike ever dies, it holds enough power in it. So that if you press this button here, it gives you enough power to start the bike. It's even better than a, a Kickstarter. <laughs> Kickstarter, you'd be kicking forever to get it started, but that you click the button on, push the button on there, you have to take the seat off, press that button on there, starts the bike up, and it, it worked perfect for me. So I tested it, it's perfect. Uh, hey, that battery, man, that's a lightsaber. So in order to remedy that situation, which the WR450F version of this bike here, it has a stator that supports a headlight because it comes with a headlight. So what I do, what I need to do, which I have yet to do, I got the parts, is upgrade to the bigger stator rotor, which is right here. I have a part number there. And you got to get this gasket here. And uh, you got to get this gasket maker sealant stuff here by Permatex and a flywheel puller. And I'm going to install the bigger rotor on there and it should support this headlight. I'm gonna do an install video for you and a testing it out and see if it works. I hope it does, it's supposed to. We'll see, stay tuned for a future video on that. Uh, but meanwhile, I just turn it on at night. I don't even ride at night anymore. But technically in some states it can be illegal if a motorcycle doesn't have the headlight on all the time, a daytime running light. I don't know about Ohio or not, but I do need to get that done so I can run the headlight because it's good for safety too. But this headlight is awesome, I have a link to it. Um, also, for your supermodel build, is you're going to want to put a speedometer on there, and I made a custom bracket here, and I have the Trail Tech super, uh, speedometer here, and works great. Gives you the temperature of uh, the bike. It gives a voltmeter on there, which is great, and um, speed. It keeps track of hours, but you don't have to keep track of hours with that speedometer on there because the bike, uh, the app on the phone, the Yamaha Power Tuner app will keep track of the exact amount of hours the bike has and give you reminders on when the maintenance is due. And also as you can tune the performance, the, the power of the bike, which is awesome. <laughs> and, and also you can, you can load uh, another map on here. This map holds two switches, which I never change. It has the first switch is balls to the wall power, full power, and the second map is that it dumbs down the power uh, so that if you go in the woods, you don't need the full 450 power. So like this bike really kind of like has a two, 250 and a 450, uh, which is awesome. And also on that custom app, you can actually make a map on your custom and send it to your friend or your friend can send it to you for you to put on your bike. And this is the only, Yamaha dirt bikes are the only ones you can do that with. So that's a, another reason why to get a YZ450FX. Um, and they're coming out with a new the 2024 YZ450FX. It's got traction control, they made it thinner, five pounds lighter, and a, bunch, and a new engine, all kinds of stuff. It's, um, and when they do, I'll do a new build on the new 2024 YZ450FX whenever that comes out. Um, also, I meant to mention when you do the Super moto wheels is you're going to have to shave the front fork guards here to accommodate uh, the wheel as you can see here if you don't it'll rub up again so just take a dremel and you shave the sides here on there so the the wheel will flow through and also I put the speed sensor right here on the fork guard and I did that in the video you'll see how I did that for the speedometer and what's cool about this YZ is it has a low light fuel sensor there too so when you're low on fuel just like street bikes it'll light up if it overheats, it lights up. The stock seat is like sitting on wood, okay? <laughs> so you're gonna wanna upgrade to the seat concept seat here. Very comfortable, I can ride all day with this. And also, I upgraded, the, you don't need to do this, but I went ahead and changed to an FMF uh, 4.1, F4.1 RCT titanium exhaust. It saves one pound. It's supposed to improve the performance a little bit, but I don't know. I never rode the stock one. Um, and I use the same header here. Also, I have the can guards here, and these are definitely recommend them. It comes with the integrated turn signals here, um, which looks great. And I have the hand guard mirrors, which you have to add. It doesn't come with this. You have to um, purchase this separately. But you know, I've dropped the bike a couple of times, crapping around here. And as you can see, you know that, that prevents the, uh, the levers from getting banged up. And it keep protects your hands. You go in the woods, riding in the, between the trees and stuff. That helps protect your hands. 
Uh, front fender, I went with a YZ85 front fender. The, uh, originally I put a OEM fender and cut it and it looked like crap. So I went with the brand new YZ85 front fender and you just have to, um, you have to drill in the proper bolt pattern there so that it'll fit. As you can see, it looks way better uh, with that setup. And honestly, that's about it. There's really nothing else you need to do, man. And like I said, I did how-to videos on how to do everything. And I'm telling you guys, you got to do a supermodal build, man. You have to. Talk to anybody that has done other, anybody else has done a supermodal build with a YZ450FX, a 2019 or newer. Ask them. They'll tell you how awesome it is. Look on YouTube. I don't even have to say nothing, man. But anyways, leave a comment below, guys. Um, let me know what you guys think of this bike. You think it looks cool? Would you like to do a supermoto build? Uh, why, if you know, if not, why not? Um, also, make sure to subscribe to my All Own Motorcycle channel. Make sure to hit thumbs up. Really helps my channel when you do. Make sure to share this video. Please leave a comment. That's why I do these videos. I love talking with you guys. So, stay tuned. For check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.